Hi, this is Gavin from FE News. I'm here at the AOC 2019 Annual Conference. I think this must be my 15th Association of Colleges Annual Conference. So join me as I chat with the main speakers from the stage, some interesting people from the breakouts, and some interesting people in the audience around the latest news and views from AOC 2019. So this is Gavin from FE News. We're here at the AOC Annual Conference 2019. I'm here with Mark from ETF. Hi, I'm Mark Wright. I'm the Head of Leadership Development at yeah, ETF. So Mark, can we chat around um, where leadership and development is at now and where you see it going to in the future? Yeah, sure. I think we have to recognise that the, the leadership succession pipeline is quite damaged in the sector and there is a lot of work to, to do to repair that. Um, ETF's been uh, on the case, as it were, for quite a few years now, given that it started off looking to repair the, at the very senior levels with our uh, strategic leadership program and our pre uh, preparation for CEO program as well. But that in itself is not sufficient. It has to be uh, built downwards, as it were, so that people have um, much better opportunities to aspire to leadership at a much earlier stage in their career. Um, so we're looking to put more provision around there we, and to then build on and augment our work in middle leadership. So we have our Leading from the Middle program, which again is um, really it's, it's an excellent program based on really trying to uh, galvanise a really important part of the college sector. It's the engine room of colleges. We really, really make sure that they both uh, enable them to, to make a real start there and what they need to do to go forward, but also aspire to those senior positions. We need to expand the pool of, of, um, of talents going for those senior positions because at the moment, uh, all, all too often, they're just not, uh, not, not strong enough. Um, we also ideally want to then uh, galvanise senior leadership further to, to take on more system leadership roles. So I think over, overall, a lot of our leadership development is focused on three core areas. It's, it's leadership of the self. There's a strong need for resilience at the moment, given the challenges that leaders face. Then it's making sure that they a really strong focus on the day job, the college itself, um, and making sure that's as ri uh, rigorous and robust as possible. And if they can manage to do that in the trying time to then start thinking beyond that and outwards, uh, not just be beyond their communities, but more nationally. We need more system leaders to then, so that the, the, the sector itself can start to lead itself more effectively. I think if we could do that and achieve that, I think government would be much more favourable than it is at the moment. It's doing some great stuff for uh, for us, but and quite rightly, it sees a sector that's in some challenge and some turmoil. We need to give them uh, evidence that we they can trust us. So I think that's if we can start to really move in that direction. But so in a way, we need to do this all at the same time. We're really trying to to plug the holes, as it were, and, and allow people to to really move through that succession pipeline and really aspire to that uh, that far end of the, of the track. And what do you see to be the, the future of leadership development in the sector? What, if you could dream, what what would you see um, we've achieved over the next sort of two, three years? What would be the the, the ultimate sort of um, way of moving the sector forward for leadership and development? I think it's it's basically building the momentum for what we've got so far. It's making sure people understand what the overall workforce strategy is, so there's less compartmentalisation. We all need to work to that one model. I mean, ETF should never and never can be the uh, covering all leadership development, of course, but we do need to point to where excellence is. So one thing we're also doing is starting to devise a leadership excellence framework. Um, so that to each point of the um, process of going through the leadership um, uh, pipeline, so they really understand what excellence looks like. So it's not just a competency framework. Um, that competency frameworks can too often be the, the, the manifesto of the mediocre. This is something we can really point to what good and effective pro, um, uh, workforce development looks like. I think if we move in that direction, that's when it becomes much more of a self-sustaining system. Um, we, we, almost the, the, you get to the point where the leadership capacity is built sufficiently so the, 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 the wounds to the succession pipeline starts to heal itself. But I think if we can do that within three to four, five years, for example, that will make the system, the system much more, return to its essential resilience. We always talk about FEs being the resilient se sector, but that's taken a, bashed, a bashing in the last few years. This is our opportunity to, to really work together more collaboratively, perhaps temper some of the, the local competition that isn't always that helpful, um, and to work together to forge something that's much more about 
that leadership agency and leadership capacity and that's the thing that's going to help both the sector and more importantly for that leadership to trickle down through the college and into the learners and into the society. And if we're going to make a, a good, if we're going to basically deal with the future that looks quite both exciting and ner unnerving given the fourth industrial revolution, this, that, is, that is a leadership issue. We've got to make sure that we can lead through this and that the learners didn't, will that's the one thing we need to leave them with, is that they can not only learn a skill and a trade, but also that how to lead their own life through this very, very um, tumultuous tr time we're going through, and we'll certainly, it's gonna, the, the, the pace will only step up. So can we have a, an explore around coaching and where you see the future for leadership and development? Yeah, I mean, coaching is uh, it, it's one of the most effective forms of CBD, and when it's done well, then it's um, it, it's the best thing to have in a, in a development program, which is why uh, most of our development programs have a coaching element. Um, and what we found is that increasingly that coaching element gets trickled down into the college. What we would like to see ultimately is uh, those colleges who can try and build a coaching culture within the college. Um, and try and encourage people to do some co-coaching uh, in, in, again with the right parameters in the same space. It's a great way to, to galvanize and improve capacity of leadership at, at, at low cost. I mean, if you can get someone in to train uh, at a reasonable rate, then uh, you're able to do something that really does have a long-term impact on the, on the college. So but again, it is making sure it's effective and you can get, if you get a poor coach doing the, uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, interventions that aren't that effective, well, that, that you have to watch for that. But I think if we really work to find opportunities to, to, to where we can start to see those cultures. So absolutely, we're all for um, seeing that proliferate ac across the sector. Um, but we also recognise there are some challenges, the time involved. But, uh, but there's a, there has to come a time when we recognise that you, you do have to take a, st uh, a step back at times to develop yourself. And if, you, if the college can't afford, uh, afford some of the, um, the local programmes, then that, why can't they do it themselves? I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Why not click subscribe so you can be informed when the latest next individual podcast or podcast mini-series from FE News are going to be released.